Right learners, in this quick lesson here, I just want to explain the difference between input and output VAT and concentrate on your recording in the ledger accounts. Now, input VAT, remember, is on all the goods or services that come into the business. So in other words, we are buying goods or we're buying services, we're paying for services. It's input VAT because the goods are coming in. That's how you can remind yourself about which the difference is. The goods are coming in, so it's called the input VAT. This VAT we pay on all these goods and services, but we can claim back from VAT, from SARS. So they actually owe us this money. They become an asset. On the other hand, the VAT output is on the goods or services going out of the business. Those goods that we sell there again, the goods are going out, and that's why it's the output VAT. Now, we have to, as an intermediary, collect the money for SARS on all these goods, and then we have to pay it over to SARS. But the money that you have already paid for your input VAT can be deducted from the amount that you owe. And so, although we'll keep an input and an output VAT account, and the input, you can treat it as an assets account, this is money owing to you, and the output a liability, money owing to them. After two months, those two accounts get closed off and brought into a VAT control account. And this VAT control just brings these accounts together so you can determine which is bigger. If the output, the credit side, is bigger, you owe SARS money. If the debit side or the amount of input is bigger, you will be getting a check back from SARS. So let's look at the double entries over here. If you are selling goods for cash, obviously you're going to receive money. So the full amount that you receive, 41040 will go into your bank account, goes into your cash receipts journal. But that there is some of it is sales and some is VAT. So you're going to have to calculate the VAT part in there. And that VAT is actually your VAT output. That is how much you owe to SARS from these sales. So while you might have collected it in your bank, it's not yours. It's going to be paid over to SARS. Your sales account, your income account, is going to be credited with the exclusive amount, the amount that doesn't in include your VAT. Now, remember that this VAT that you're collecting, you're going to pay over to SARS, so you won't have it. It's the 36000 that you will have, and that is what your income is, and that is what you work your profit out, not the full amount. Now, exactly the same if I was buying goods for cash. Well, at this stage, I'd be paying, so my bank is going out. And again, I'll have to pay the full amount. Some of it been trading stock, which is the exclusive amount, and the extra that I've paid, which I will be claiming back, is my VAT input account. So important to realize that the bank, the amount received or paid, is the total. In your ledger accounts, you'll keep the records of the VAT input and output, but your accounts must show the exclusive, because that's what you're going to make a profit on, that is what your trading stock is valued at. Now, if I bring in that we bought or sold on credit, it would be the same concept as before, but obviously we're not receiving the money. So if we sell on credit, we will debit. We'll add on to our debtors the full amount. That's what the debtor owes me. Of that, 2,520 is owing to SARS. That's your VAT output and your actual sales of which you're making a profit 18,000 and the same base if we're buying goods on credit the only difference is where as it was banged before because we were paying we now owe our creditor the full amount and the trading stock is the exclusive and the VAT input is 2,800 so let's just quickly look at that and how that goes into the ledger accounts so my VAT output account, which is recording the amount that I owe to SARS, will be on the credit side. And just, if you're doing ledger accounts, these double entries are important. It was either in the bank for cash sales, or it was in the debtor's control for your um, credit sales. 
And then if you go down into the VAT input account over here, VAT input, remember, is uh, an asset. It's money that you can claim back. So from your cash purchases and your creditors control. Again, in ledgers, the double entry is very important. Right, so that's how we'd go into there. But now, let's take another example. A debtor now comes and pays me 2500 to settle a debt of 2728 We are giving him a discount of 228 So we're not getting the full amount. The debtor owed me 2728 We are not going to receive it. So now, SARS does allow you to claim back the VAT on the discount, the part that you are losing. So you are, your bank is getting in the 2500 That's how much money you're receiving. The extra 228 that you are allowing as discount, you can claim back the tax, the VAT, in that 228 So if you do your calculation, your discount will be 200 and you can claim back VAT of 28. So what does that do to your VAT output account now? Your VAT output account, remember, is on the credit side, you owed them, and you will now debit them with the 28. You are claiming back. You are reducing the amount that you owe SARS. Now, if an owner takes goods with a cost price of 570 for his own use, remember an owner will always take it cross, he doesn't take make a profit out of himself. We know that that's going to be drawings and trading stock. But now you must remember that when you bought these goods, it would have been treated as trading stock and VAT input because you would have been claiming back the VAT on those goods. Now the business entity rule comes into play here. You cannot as a business claim VAT back on goods that are for the personal use of the owner. So if you claimed it back, you now owe it to SARS. So while your drawings will show the full amount, your trading stock, which is always the exclusive amount, and you are going to reduce the amount that you can claim back of 70 Rand. Or looking at the ledger account, remember those are the amounts that you could claim back, and you are now reducing that amount by the drawings. Right, if you had a bad debt, now remember a bad debt is writing off the debtor's account, which is the inclusive amount. So you had a debtor that owed 912 Rand. You are not going to get that money. So yes, you'll be cancelling it out of the debtor's account. But again, SARS will say to you that in that 912, there is some VAT. And this is a legitimate expense in your business. So you don't have to pay the VAT on that. If you're not receiving this money, SARS will not expect you to pay over the VAT. Now, you can't claim back the whole 912. You can only claim back the VAT part of it. So again, you're going to have to do a calculation, bearing in mind this is an inclusive amount. So your expense is only 800. That's the exclusive. The VAT output, you're going to claim back. Or if we look in our ledger account, that's what we owed SARS. And we are now claiming back for the discount, the bad debt. If a debtor returned goods, you would also be claiming it back. If you receive some discount, you're not paying the full amount, you can't claim it all back, so you'd reduce the input. If you return some goods, likewise, you can't claim the VAT because you don't have the goods, you can credit. Overall, this has to be ethical. Now, while SARS will operate in a fair manner, they will not expect you to pay VAT if um, these discount or bad debts. They give you the fairness. The business is expected to act ethically that they can prove this. Now just one thing I need to clarify. While I have been putting these on the debit side of the VAT output, the, the reason was this was the amounts we owed. It's to do with our sales, so we're reducing it. There is an alternative method. You are claiming that back. So it is possible to put it in the input account. And likewise, the drawings, because you owe SARS's money, could have gone in the output. And that is where I've made a note a couple of times to say to you that you need to make, 
ask your teacher which method you are following in your school or in your uh, province or depending on what examining board you, you actually um, are part of because you can do it either way the end result will be exactly the same because at the end this output account will be balanced off after two months because we pay VAT every two months will be closed off and it'll be transferred to the VAT control account now your VAT control account remember what we said over here is the VAT control account is where we bring it together so all your output will come into the VAT control all your input will also come into the VAT control and you can work out then whether you owe them or they owe you now because of the fact that there are different ways of handling the input and output you will often find in a test or exam situation particularly in grade 12 that you actually will just be asked to calculate the amount that is owed so you would start off and say I owe SARS 36,000 but I've got an input already so I can claim back I have sales of goods I owe SARS more I purchase trading stock so I'm going to reduce the amount I owe I purchase equipment and remember a business can claim back VAT on anything used within the business it's not only trading stock you can claim back debtors allowances you are not getting all of that sales some of those goods have been returned so you do not have to pay the VAT on those goods that are returned over to SARS you're reducing your sales and likewise with the data likewise with the bad debts you're claiming it all back but the drawings you would have claimed back when you bought it you now owe it to SARS this is just an alternative um, which does simplify processes because then you're not getting mixed up with input and output accounts the important thing is that you in grade 11 do have to do ledger accounts so you do have to know it but I would also encourage you to actually be able to do the calculation in the long run so now learners you need to practice these ledger accounts and hopefully you'll get a chance to practice some of these calculations as well